Hi and welcome to the PowerEck YouTube channel. In this video we're going to talk about Direct Lake Mode in Microsoft Fabric. Direct Lake Mode is a way to directly query lake data in Microsoft OneLake. It is extremely powerful and allows you to not convert to the local Vertipack engine in Microsoft Power BI. However, it does come with some limitations and considerations you should know that are really important in order to optimize performance and get the most out of direct lake mode. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe for more. Okay, so in Microsoft Fabric, it is very important to work within the limits of your Microsoft Fabric capacity. There is bursting and smoothing that allows you to burst out of your capacity limits temporarily However, Microsoft Fabric will take back those resources to later unutilized slots. Let's take an F64 for example, which is the equivalent of a premium P1 capacity and Power BI. You have 64 CUs in the Microsoft F64 capacity. In an F64, there are certain limitations for direct query mode that you can find in the Microsoft documentation. For example, an F64 has a capacity limit uh, for one to query 1.5 billion rows with um, direct lake mode. This is a lot, and this is a good limitation to work within. However, if you consider taking about 25 columns, let's say 20 text columns and five numerical columns, then your limitation becomes more significant. If you turn this into a calculation, you will get a result of uh, allowing you to query around 140 million rows uh, times 25 columns. So this is a practical example and a guide. Of course, if you get an F128, this number will double. You will be able to run around 280 million row queries in your memory with about 25 columns. Of course, this means that you would have to query 25 columns. So let's say you have a Power BI report and in total there are 25 columns, 20 text columns. Then this will be your limit. If you go outside of your limit, you will temporarily burst. And this can have some significant limitations to the user performance and the user experience. For example, Microsoft Fabric will protect its resources. It will monitor the five minute average window of resource usage. And if you burst and you burst too much, so you go outside of your resource limits because you're querying more than the 140 million rows, for example, on the F64, you will get interactive delays if it cannot smooth out these resources in the next five minutes. This can be significant. However, it cannot be clear at first what is happening to the end user. So let's say, for example, the end user is clicking through your Power BI report and sending queries to uh, one lake, direct lake queries. Let's say they're running more than 140 million rows in total for the queries, so you're kind of bursting, but they're doing this in a five minute uh, uh, window which is kind of common if you're interacting with your report, you will be using it uh, more intensely inside of a short time window. The user will experience interactive delays. So there are very uh, important things to consider to avoid these kind of scenarios because this will kill your user experience. Your user will um, experience significant delays and will be wondering if your report is optimized or it is working well. Even worse, if Microsoft Fabric sees that you're depleting a 10 minute window of CU resources, you will get throttling. So queries won't run. And this is significant. Uh, queries will maybe cancel, they will run slowly. And this can lead to users getting a very bad experience and thinking that your report simply doesn't work. All right, let's look at the direct lake feature limitations and what kind of workarounds we could look at already in the beginning. So currently unavailable are calculated rows, uh, calculated columns and calculated tables. This limits what you can do as an end user, uh, or a self-service analyst or a data analyst or business analyst inside of Microsoft Power BI 
or if you, if you uh, directly access the data model. There's also no role level security. That means you cannot filter your data to the end user using a user principal name, for example, in Power BI. Of course, this limits what you can do and how you can distribute the Power BI data model or the semantic model. However, do note in the future, there will be a one leg security model that will allow you to work around this kind of feature on a data level. You also cannot create mixed query modes inside of Microsoft uh, Power BI. So a semantic model cannot use a mixed mode of direct query with a direct lake or with import mode. You cannot create hybrid uh, tables and you could not, for example, create a hybrid table um, where you have a mixed query mode, for example, direct query mixed with import mode where you incrementally refresh import mode or anything like that. That's not possible with direct lake. You can only directly query uh, a sing in a single query mode. So let's focus on what kind of solution there would be to these kind of scenarios. Of course, with row level limit, row level security, we're kind of limited to what Microsoft will, Fabric will offer in the future in terms of one leg security and data level security models. But in terms of calculated columns and calculated tables, there are some pretty common solutions that you can apply. Microsoft Fabric enables a data analyst to kind of become an analytics engineer or to do some data engineering work. That means that the developer or the architect or the analyst now has the ability to transform data further upstream inside of the lake house, the SQL endpoint, for example. That means you might have to learn some Spark SQL, some PySpark, so Python, maybe even some R or Scala, of course, also some SQL and create maybe some SQL views that already do your transformations further upstream inside of the SQL endpoint or the lake house directly. But this also, of course, allows you to learn how to move things further upstream, which is a best practice in any case. Then there are calculations, certain things that you would like to do inside of Power BI that you can no longer do with the direct lake mode. Of course, that means that you can do some lake house level calculations. Okay, and now of course, to the most interesting part of this video, performance optimization toolkit. How can we actually tune our performance for direct lake and how can we avoid all of these limitations that I mentioned earlier and how can we tune our performance to get the most out of direct lake mode? First things first and general data model best practices are avoid many to many relationships or bi-directional relationships. Perhaps create bridging tables if you have many to many relationships or avoid them altogether. Bidirectional relationships should not be part of your data model. They also really reduce your performance and strain your resources even more on direct lake mode. Then of course we want to manage our volume. That means our data volume that we are querying. We need to remove unnecessary columns. We need to trim our columns as much as possible. For example, having JSON string columns are deadly for your performance. We want to pre-aggregate where possible. So of course, really consider whether your end user, end user needs that detail level view. Do they really need to drill in into, the, for example, daily data, or is it enough to give them the monthly data or the weekly data even? This could significantly reduce the data amount that has to be loaded or queried using direct leg mode and can enhance your user performance and experience significantly. Then we want to compress data. For example, we want to use compression modes such as uh, uh, using Snappy as a compression type that's optimized for querying data directly. There are other compression types, so you can choose whichever one suits your best, but for direct log mode, I would suggest that you use something like Snappy. Then there are some best practices for optimizing your data. For example, using V order. 
vorder is a microsoft specific way of ordering your data so that is optimized for query and writes it will enhance your performance as well then there are things like c order for using for for using um, applying to columns that kind of partition uh, and cluster your columns so that uh, queries run um, more performative by data skipping and this is uh, significant for columns that you query or that your end user queries more often this however does cost you a complete rewrite of the table every time you apply it and it is resource intensive in the transformation process however the end user experience will be much better Let's say, for example, your end user queries the region comp uh, many times. Creating a Z order on the region field would make a lot of sense in that case because the data will be clustered and partitioned by a region in terms of files in the background and the user experience will be much better. All right, so the best practices for implementation. Of course, it is important in the beginning to start with a thorough data analysis, what data you have, string columns, numerical columns, how many decimal places you're going to use, and so on. Very carefully check and document what kind of data you have and plan very well for the future. Then monitor your resource usage regularly. It is really important, especially in Microsoft Fabric, to monitor, there are some monitoring app solutions out there, um, to monitor your Power BI end user resource usage utilization and to see if you're working within the limits. It is very important that you also, especially as an administrator, take immediate action if you can see that you're running uh, close to your resource limits. Then you need to test with rep representative data volumes. That means strain your resources in the scenarios that are possible for actual end users with the data volume that you're expecting or that you're expecting in the future to see if you're going to be working within the limits when the solution goes productive. You need to plan for scalability. Is your solution sustainable? Can it uh, uh, work in the future where there's more data coming in, where their users might have scenarios where they're using your report intensively for a short period of time? specifically for end of month uh, reporting needs, for example, in the finance department. Then of course, it is important to also document your optimization decisions for future reference and for future projects. So to conclude, Direct Lake, can be, Direct Lake mode can be amazing. However, it does require careful planning, regular monitoring and thoughtful optimization. Try to focus on upstream data preparation and transformation and maintain a balance between performance and functionality. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video and please don't forget to subscribe.